Uh, thank you so much for your kind participation in today's uh, uh, national webinar organized by uh, the Socialist Party. And the topic of uh, this uh, webinar is very interesting and very relevant. That is revisiting Ramanohar Lohia, challenges to the theory and practice of alternative socialism. I, Randhir Kumar Gautam, on behalf of the Socialist Party India, welcome distinguished speaker, respected friend, respected chair of today's session. I welcome Dr. Raghu Kumarji, author of the book. I welcome Sandeep Pandeji. We will be joined by Thampus Thomasad. I welcome uh, Indrajit Ji, Prakash Ji, and Professor B. Bal Mochan. And all the viewers, both on Zoom platform and Facebook platform. Uh, let me give a brief introduction to our speaker, Dr. Raghu Kumar, is well-known um, writer, prolific writer. He did his PhD from Ospania University. And the topic of his PhD is on the impact on of globalization on industrial relation. He has good understanding of law. He was a part of a social movement. Uh, and now he's writing on social issues. He's writing on uh, leaders like Ramanuhar Lohia, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, and he has published many articles on uh, different uh, journals, in reputed journals, on these very issues. So I request him to uh, kindly give his uh, presentation on the very topic, revisiting Ramanuhar Lohia, challenges to the theory and practice of alternative socialism. Dr. Raghuji, over Thank time. you, thank you, thank you. First of all, let me thank uh, the Socialist Party India, uh, uh, Tham, uh, Thampan Thamsanji, uh, President, and uh, uh, Society for Communal Harmony, Professor Ranjit Kumar Gautamji, uh, Sandeep Pandeji, who has taken the initiative and uh, 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 decided about this particular session. I am very much thankful to all of you. Uh, in fact, uh, it is true that uh, I, I had a, a kind of uh, what's called as uh, interest in uh, Lohia's philosophy as early as in 1985-86. Because uh, especially after 1989, when among our friends uh, with certain uh, uh, Marxist ideology uh, and also certain liberal uh, philosophies, but we were struggling hard to understand the fall of Russia because we were just young at that time. We have come from universities, colleges, and we were unable to understand uh, the, the, the fall of uh, the Soviet, Soviet bloc all over the world by 1980, between 1985 to 1990, several things happened in the world. So we were, uh, we were seriously discussing about these areas during which time one of my friends introduced me to the ideas of uh, Lohiaji. Then uh, as a person working in the Department of Telecommunications as a junior telecom officer and subdivision engineer, during that time, I tried to uh, uh, translate certain of the ideas of uh, Lohiaji into trade union activity by trying to uh, redefine the area of working class, where by the time I was thick and thin in the activities, so the idea of working class was only uh, taking that uh, group C and D employees constitute working class and group B and all other officers will constitute uh, their enemies or uh, the agents of the management. The idea of which I wanted to redefine. Then uh, uh, with that, uh, I successfully I would experiment for about uh, six to eight years on this idea. I could uh, see that uh, contradictory uh, persons, contradictory ideas, contradictory 
uh, uh, unions come together, sit together, discuss among themselves, instead of approaching the management for everything, can we resolve the issues within us first? This is the experiment I could do for about eight years. So then uh, after that, I came out of the department and I started practicing as an advocate. And I ventured this idea of Center for Social Dialogue also uh, with that particular idea. And as far as uh, 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 somewhere around 2014-15 onwards, I, when I was uh, going through the social media, I found that there's a lot of uh, uh, what's called as a, uh, 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 negative narratives generating uh, uh, against Gandhi and uh, other areas, which made me or compelled me to reread Gandhi. From 2014-15 onwards, I started rereading Gandhi. And then in the course of uh, such rereading, I, I, I could uh, somehow uh, come, come into contact with Ravana Somayaji, which I lost for over a decade in the, in the meanwhile. And then uh, when he heard, uh, he came to know that I am reading, reading Gandhi again, he encouraged me to start writing about uh, Gandhi's, uh, uh, Gandhi's contribution to the nation. It so happened that uh, during that time only, I thought of uh, even uh, writing a book on Lohia. But the, when I started inquiring about these uh, ideas, the first uh, encounter which I received is in most of the Western literature, especially the Marxist literature, the very idea called as, is there anything called as alternative socialism, which was almost uh, uh, was what's called as accepting certain category of uh, people called as dissident Marxists, a, a group of people who are working uh, in America in certain areas, they were talking about something called as the alternative way of understanding Marxism. But the mainstream Marxism was always considering that any idea of alternative socialism uh, will, be, will not be satisfying the test of scientific understanding because Marx has uh, almost defined the area of scientific thinking in uh, social sciences. So this was the dilemma. So when I started uh, uh, inquiring about the literature on the subject matter, the frequent question is, what do you want to say by, by the word alternative socialism? What exactly you mean by alternative socialism? The, the capital and the proletariat are opponents. The capitalist society naturally leads to intensification of the relations, pauperization of the working class, and thereby socialization of the labor, and then consequently having a kind of working class consciousness, and then it resulting in some kind of an advanced industrial working class that's called as proletariat. And this proletariat class, because of the production relations and the contradictions within that, they have to necessarily challenge the capitalist system. The capitalist system will be uh, uh, creating its own enemy out of that. So these are all uh, the accepted things and uh, there is nothing else other than this uh, a, a way of approach to socialism. But when I started rereading uh, this area, then uh, we have a, ca a, a category of people called as uh, utopian socialists, pre-Marxist utopian socialists. And then uh, a category of other people who are hesitant to have this, uh, what's called as intensifying class war as a Fabian socialist. And these are all the uh, attributes or words which are used for anybody who tries to think of any alternative ideas of socialism. So this is the attribute even given to Lohia by the mainstream Marxists. So they, they, they either understood the Lohia also as a Fabian socialist, because this is the uh, what's called as understanding given by uh, uh, Professor uh, uh, Satish Chandra in his uh, 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 freedom struggle, in the history of freedom struggle also, when the issue of uh, Lohia and other socialists come, they just define uh, these group of people as Fabian socialists or utopian socialists at the most. So this is how the things uh, were uh, happening. And then this has prompted me to reread again, uh, revisit again uh, Lohia. So I, I try to uh, put this particular area into four topics in my book that is called as intellectual and political biography of uh, Lohia. 
here i am i have not gone into deeper into the every aspect of uh, biological aspect of a uh, biographical aspect of uh, lohia but only his intellectual search uh, and his political activity only i have taken uh, as a, a main content then what lohia thought of the critic of the capitalism communism and gandhi gandhism because uh, uh, lohia did not restrict his criticism only to capitalism he has uh, even uh, offered some critique on gandhian philosophy also then he was critical about the marxist understanding of uh, the social change these were all the three areas so this is one then uh, how on his own he evolved his idea of history class and caste because uh, one of the repeated questions that come that comes in the marxist and uh, marxist uh, way of understanding is entire history is history of class studies so uh, lohia again uh, made a detailed what's called investigation into the idea and he tried to relocate the concepts uh, uh, available the major concepts available on history that history as a linear progress history as a, a cyclic progress then what are all the advantages or disadvantages or defects in all these areas how the linear progress idea has come in the europe in the 18th 19th century as a predominant feature and then what is the experience of certain societies old societies archaic societies or asiatic societies which are something like india and china which have seen a lot of history in between that is uh, they have seen certain uh, what's called as uh, uh, up, uh, going up in the wheel of history and again falling down in the history also so he developed the he thought of developing a new idea of history also so he tried to uh, what's called as uh, synthesize the two contradictory opinions of the linear progress of history and the cyclic progress of history and it is one wonderful exercise he has done in political economy and he tried to relocate the caste because at that time at that point of time caste was either understood in the marxian terms as a concept of uneven development that is one concept which like people like devi prasad chatopadhyay and other marxists in india try to uh, 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 understand the caste phenomenon and then ambedkar uh, argument uh, is based on the uh, text of uh, religious texts and the scriptures and uh, other uh, areas of uh, this thing so but lohia they made a specific contribution understanding caste as a historical process or the oscillation between class and caste is the history of the uh, history of the world so these are all two three important uh, what's called as foundational uh, areas are there where uh, lohia was trying to convey something then i try to understand lohia on his doctrinal foundations because before coming to all these things he laid down certain doctrinal conditions doctrinal foundations for his theory so basically i i try to place or reappreciate the lohia's critic of capitalism lohia's critic of communism lohia's critic of gandhism and then his understanding of history class and caste and how the class and caste oscillations formulate the history not just class struggles and then doctrinal foundations of uh, his uh, uh, areas are especially things like uh, uh, doctrine of uh, equidistance doctrine of uh, 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 equal irrelevancy the theory of irrelevancy and then uh, saptakranti that is uh, they, he wanted to address the issue of uh, contradictions which we call contradictions like uh, the gender contradictions the south and north contradiction or the uh, developed nations and the underdeveloped nations the capitalist versus the working class and uh, so many other caste and uh, other uh, advanced caste these all these contradictions he wanted to resolve or understand in terms of as uh, something called as a seven revolutions or saptak kranti what he said then uh, he he also struggled hard to lay down a, a different philosophical foundation for alternative socialism so the question which i started in my inquiry is there anything called as alternative socialism and what are all the conditions obtaining either in india or in asiatic society because this concept of alternative socialism he has taken to even uh, 
uh, Asiatic forums also. And he said that Asian and African nations, they need a different approach for uh, uh, the uh, very socialism itself. So these, these areas I have tried to uh, present in my book, along with the last chapter that is a critic of Lohia himself and how we can restate, restate Lohia's ideas now. Because uh, uh, the, 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 the major issues that have come up in the, in the idea of uh, alternative socialism is there is already a predominant idea of socialism in the Marxist tradition, which has convinced more number of people, more number of serious intellectuals all over the world, not only uh, in India, all over the world. And there is also a criticism on uh, the, uh, this particular concept of socialism of a Marxist variety that it is a, a bit of Eurocentric. That is, it can resolve the issues of Europe only, not beyond. So these, all these considerations have come before me to reappreciate Lohia and to present before you the issue called as uh, Lohian understanding of alternative socialism. Then who is Lohia and how do I, 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 I reconsider the, this issue is, most of the people, most of his admirers, they call Lohia as an original thinker and a theoretician, practitioner, and a passionate human being. And the best of the best epitaph ever uh, addressed to Lohia is, in my understanding, a restless spirit of India. A restless spirit of India. That is, I, I could uh, see after uh, Gandhi, uh, a person who was struggling hard to understand the Indian society and to prescribe alternatives instead of the the choices available in the mainstream. And, the, uh, and I have seen uh, in Lohia that kind of uh, a continuous struggle, internal and external, in placing this alternative before the people. In, it is also a, it's a fact that Lohia has a lot of difficulty in convincing his own comrades. See, for example, uh, Acharya Narendra Dev was more and more convinced about uh, the Marxian uh, uh, dialectics, Marxian way of understanding, except that he wanted to say that the, the materialistic dialectics to be understood as uh, humanistic dialectics, the dialectics of humanism. Whereas uh, 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 Jay Prakash Narayanji, a, 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 a senior comrade of uh, uh, Lohiaji, he was also convinced at one point of time because he was a main Marxist theory, Marxist understanding, my man of my Marxist understanding. But over a period of time, he reassessed Gandhi's role in uh, social change and he has changed certain of his ideas. And then from 53, 54 onwards, he slowly withdrew himself from the political activity. He joined the Sarvodaya movement. He worked along with Vinoba Babaji. He was more convinced about you know, Baba Babaji's uh, Sarvodaya movement as an alternative for uh, uh, what's the implementation of Gandhian plan of uh, uh, what's called land distribution or uh, uh, non-violent uh, reconstitution of feudal relations. So this is uh, one thing. Then another friend of Lohia, another serious theoretician, Ashok Mehtaji, was also by 19, mid 1950s were more and more convinced that uh, India, countries like India, which are called as backward economies, they need a different approach. Uh, and for that, he need, they need to work along with Congress. So this is one area where, that is the Lohia struggled hard to convince his own friends about the correctness of his philosophy. That is what I found uh, when I was uh, uh, doing an intensive work on Lohia. So this restless, a restless spirit of India is, I think, uh, the most uh, probable and possible, uh, what's called as uh, 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 understanding Lohia. Then first question, the Lohia, the, 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 the socialist, the Congress Socialist Party has started its own wing within the Congress Party in 1934. From 1934 onwards, and especially somewhere around 1937, when more number of uh, what's called as uh, communist uh, leadership has joined because of their own uh, what's called as uh, political reasons, their banning of communist party, they mostly joined with the Congress Socialist Party. 
but at the beginning of the very uh, uh, the initial sessions of the congress uh, socialist party there was a, there was a problem relating to resolution of objectives and that resolution was whether the freedom struggle of india can be one of the objectives of the socialist party or not and uh, most of the uh, people who with the uh, with a greater marxist understanding they deferred and they objected to such a kind of uh, this thing with uh, saying that when the society is taken into a socialist pattern as a whole the independence of a nation need not be a primary object that can be the secondary goal so it was the, the, the beginnings of lohias uh, what is called as a, uh, a, a disagreement with the mainstream marxists almost started with the, with the establishment of the congress socialist party itself and then subsequently especially during 1939 to 42 when uh, lohia was uh, has worked for some time with the mainstream communists within the congress socialist party and he started examining the certain primus primacies of uh, marxist philosophy and his first essay was uh economics of gandhi that is gandhi marx gandhi and socialism which we will not officially we call as economics of marx he started examining economics of, of uh, economics of marx and the first question he raised to himself is if the loss of capitalism as contemplated by marx was correct there must have been an intense capital workers uh, related uh, uh, what's called as uh, uh intensity of pauperization uh, of the working class in the in the advancement of the capitalist uh, societies whereas it did not happen so the first question was he did not criticize it but he wanted to examine why why that uh, uh, the the uh, working class has not uh, uh gone in the in the lines expected in the in the according to the marxist laws that there was a pauperization and instead from the beginning of the 20th century there is a kind of a, a greater improvement in the conditions of the working class especially in the europe so what could be the reason then he tried to find the problem as in the marxist analysis of capital laws capitalist laws and in his understanding of the progress of history in understanding the, re, the so establishment of capitalist society what alohia observed is his laws were mostly abstract that he has not taken into consideration and it does not mean that he has not actually taken into consideration marx knows what alohia's objection is marx knows what is the quantity of uh, exploitation of the Uh, colonial countries by the european capitalist classes and whether capitalism has developed as an internal mechanism within the capitalist society or as a result of colonization or as a result of exploitation of the colonial countries this was the first question in fact this question was not raised by that time 1939 to 1942 in the entire history of the world no no political economist raised this issue very seriously and the the the, the first thesis has come from lohia is the capitalist development the very phenomena of capitalist development is the result of the colonization then he he tried to re understand restate the one of the most famous uh, uh, theories of lenin that imperialism is the highest state of uh, capitalism he is uh, he tried to uh, what's called as uh, uh, refuse that kind of uh, understanding and he restated that capitalism and imperialism are nothing but twins they started together by giving a different name different nomenclature as colon colon colonization for the earlier uh, phenomena and then imperialism for the later phenomena is nothing but uh, Uh, what's called as a, a mis- downgrading the colonial exploitation so with these are the two foundation foundations for the uh, lohia to again uh, uh, what's called as come with his own proportions but unfortunately between 1939 to 1942 he wrote the first essay on uh, Ga- the marx gandhi and uh, socialism that is economics of marx but there was a disruption because he was arrested he was a great political activist basically 
So from 1942 to almost 44, 45, he was in the jail. And then when he was released again, there was a thick of thick content of political activity. So there was, and in the meanwhile, there was several dissensions and uh, no, uh, disagreements between the socialist dangers because uh, every socialist philosopher within the Congress social policy had his own understanding of socialism, even when while differing with Marxism. So in the meanwhile, certain developments happened and till 1952, <coughs> Lohia could not get again the environment to revisit his own theory. So in 1952, when he was in Hyderabad and trying to reconstitute the Socialist Party, then he, as a series of lectures, he again developed his ideas of history, his, ultimately his ideas of philosophy, and in the process of that, he developed the idea of uh, uh, understanding history uh, in, a, in an advanced manner than what Marx said. Because in the, in the Europe, they have seen one, one linear progress of a society uh, uh, developing from slave to serfdom, serfdom to feudal, feudal to capitalist. But they have, the Asiatic experience of the Asiatic societies is they have seen the, the, the process of uh, cycles in all these things. At least uh, two cycles have been uh, 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 practically in, uh, experienced by the Asiatic society. So in understanding the history also, the mere understanding of history as a class struggle, uh, he found insufficient. And then he tried to explain the experience of the Asiatic societies, especially India, uh, going through the process of going up in the, in the uh, wheel of uh, development to the highest point and again coming down and again going up. These are all the two or three uh, uh, what's called a sequences he has seen, which he, he tried to explain as the history, as the history of oscillations between class and caste. And why these oscillations uh, happen is also a matter of uh, issue. So he, re he tried to relocate this problem in one important aspect of all the developments of the societies. That is, each society has started with an idea of uh, uh, what's called as a, a maximum efficiency in a particular thing. Say, for example, uh, economic equality is taken as one criteria by one society. And they go maximum to that uh, this thing, or freedom, or, or uh, freedom to uh, what's called as a, a, a license affair economy, any particular idea. A society takes that particular idea and takes it to extreme thing. And at one point of time, the relations cannot be further resolved. Then they have to come down to the, uh, what's called, uh, to resolve that uh, extreme stage. They have to come down to the caste and uh, redistribute uh, the, what's called as uh, uh, the, the activity, economic activity of the society in terms of caste. And again, after some time, this, so this, to avoid this particular thing, he wanted, he introduced an idea called as, Instead of maximum efficiency in one particular direction, you have to think of total efficiency in different directions. That is, in all almost all the equalities. Like you must have the equality between the, the I, I, I explained you in the first, first part of my session, that is Saptakranti. That means the seven contradictions have to be at least at the minimum level, they have to be resolved. Then uh, the, the, the idea of society, organizing the society, society has to undergo in terms of a village district, state, and nation. And he asked that which he called as Chaukamba. And then another element of uh, the organization of the society is world order. Until unless a world order of equal distribution, equal distribution, not equal, equal distribution is pointed out, is, is achieved. Even the achievements of individual societies may not ultimately be sustained. This is one uh, area which uh, he further contributed. Uh, then, the, the, the most important segment or uh, the problematic area for the Indian society to, uh, to, to what's called as uh, come out of the barriers of the existing order, which is not obtained in other societies is the caste system. So entire Lohian theory not only understands the caste system in terms of uh, the oscillations between class and caste, but also as an idea that deserves to be demolished within the system. So uh, uh, to, to, uh, to, to, uh, to 
to to challenge that caste system he has come with uh, what is called as a uh, uh, higher uh, element of upliftment to the backward classes and uh, the depressed classes and then uh, even the preferential treatment to the low, to the uh, classes which were discriminated and or in backward stages even at the cost of you know advanced classes so this is the, that is called as this is the practical side of uh, his philosophy then all through his career uh, he has challenged uh, the 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 state and its uh, 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 what's called as uh, undemocratic approaches and he has challenged it not only in terms of an organizational struggle even in terms of law because almost at every occasion right from the first instance where after independence during the 1950s when the up riots were agitating against the imposition of certain uh, cess against them from that day onwards the the the, the, the lohia has tried to uh, understood the significance of the legal institutions and wherever a chance comes he was approaching the highest fora and explaining the contradiction between the constitutional goals and the law that is acting upon so uh, in that process probably after independence uh, we cannot exclude the uh, uh, the communist uh, contribution in this area because they were also consistently struggling uh, in establishing the uh, civil rights of the people for struggle and for uh, this thing but the difference between the others and is uh, always the lohia was always invoking the idea of civil disobedience this is one of the greatest gifts given by gandhi to the indian society is the understanding of lohia so lohia was invoking uh, the idea of civil disobedience in the social struggles but at the same time when he criticized gandhi in one or two areas one of the area was he wanted to he he could, uh, the lohia could not rule out the non uh, the violence as a, was called as an altogether impossibility he said it may be there may be a possibility of uh, uh, what's called as a, a violent resolution but maybe at the ultimate stages of a particular uh, uh, struggle where the struggle has to be terminated at one point of time but that uh, i think uh, uh, in in that aspect uh, i have certain reservations because any element of uh, violence at any point of time has the possibility of uh, establishing again uh, a kind of a dictator uh, because idealism always has the possibility of uh, uh, creating a dictator so this is how uh, i try to explain the alternative socialism because uh, uh, the socialist parties in india the thinkers who say that they belong to lohia or they belong to jay prakash narayan or they belong to uh, madhulimaya's uh, idea or or something madhudandavati or any other uh, alternative socialist philosopher they must explain or they must show to the society that they have a distinct uh, what is called as a social philosophy behind them and that social philosophy need not be a closed system something like uh, uh, marxism or communism uh, uh, marxist variety of communism but well, as uh, lohia has correctly said every social philosophy has to be open ended it must, it must it must be in a position to accommodate the corrections and also accommodate the historical experience this this the philosophy philosophies which cannot accommodate the philosophical experience which comes in the subsequent stages we may have to suffer for their own uh, uh, what's called as constricted philosophies so this is how lohia has uh, tried but if if you, lohia is restricted only to something called as a, uh, you know uh, 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 non violent struggle or uh, uh, the peaceful resolution of the uh, uh, social problems or uh, a synthesis between marx and gandhi or if we think that he is only something like a, a distribution of the uh, uh, centers of power i think uh, these are all already available as alternatives and uh, if uh, a radical change of the society is only considered as one of the uh, lohia's problem because lohia repeatedly said that india needs a radical reconstitution but in all these things there are already available other alternatives say for example if you say that uh, the this the socialism has to be more democratic that is what lohia wanted to say germany in the social democratic party uh, activity 
the the disciples of uh, Ferdinand Lawson. Even uh, uh, during the, the time of Marx themselves, they have uh, uh, they have they have come with certain ideas of uh, democratization of uh, uh, communism or socialism. So uh, then, if you say that uh, uh, so, uh, it's only just uh, non-violence, all these kinds of experiments are already held. But there is a definite philosophy of Logia. That is, he wanted to be a highly militant movement. He wanted the resolutions of the issues as urgently as possible because his main idea always running in his philosophy is theory of immediacy. That is an idea and concrete. He tried to explain this in terms of uh, the idea, ideal and concrete. An ideal which remains as an ideal or not realized within the shortest period of a time, it becomes uh, what is called as abort. It becomes redundant. It becomes of no utility. So theory of immediacy, which Marx, which Lohia was stating so seriously, I think it is uh, one of the uh, most uh, important element in the social in in the so in the alternative socialism contemplated by Lohia, along with uh, the Saptakranti and the uh, uh, Chaukamba, with the fifth element of world governance and and uh, trying for the world governance is another uh, area which post Lohia many of the Lohians and socialists have not taken seriously, and even that movement for world government also has slowly uh, uh, what's called as uh, dwindled down in the in the in the because uh, the activity has to be has to be seriously taken up by the uh, socialists because the world government eno and other areas which are working as world governments are very weak alternatives to the idea of world government i think uh, i think i will uh, stop here uh, for a while and this is my presentation and then uh, i have also anticipated some three four issues before the socialists especially uh, Lohia could analyze the economics after Marx, but uh, what about uh, the Lohians uh, uh, understanding the economics after globalization? And then what is the difference in our understanding, in our understanding, and the understanding of other socialist philosophers in understanding globalization? And uh, how do we, uh, 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 what's called as, place ourselves in the description of uh, uh, understanding the economics. This is my, uh, 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 what I, I, I put as challenges. And uh, apart from that, the, 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 what's called as the failure of dialogue among the, within the socialist uh, spectrum about uh, the understanding of the alternative socialism uh, is also a, a challenge before uh, the socialists. So I thank and stop here for allowing the discussion or any questions to be taken. Thank you once again, uh, Socialist Party of India, and then uh, uh, Sandeep Pandeji and uh, Ranadir Kumar Gautamji. All thank you all. Thank you, Raghuji. It was a really very uh, thought provoking session. And um, really, you uh, put a very alternative way of uh, understanding Lohia. And there is a difference between uh, what Lohia stands for and what Lohians uh, think that what they understood for. So it was really a very uh, insightful session. And uh, your uh, uh, deliberation is a kind of invitation for all of us to engage with that quest of uh, democracy, which uh, was inculcated uh, by Ramanohar Lohia and uh, his quest for equality for that. And there are many contemporary challenges. When we think about Lohia, we think that they, his thought is becoming more and more important than his time and current challenges uh, also a kind of invitation for all of us to engage with that satna of Ramana Hatlo here. So uh, thank you so much. It was really very uh, uh, provoking session. Now I request the respected participant, if he or she has any comment, please indicate me in the chat box. 
So we can begin with Sandeep Baiji. <clears throat> no, I think uh, just give everybody an opportunity. Anybody wants to speak can just unmute and ask a question to yes, yes. Advocate Raghu Kumar or uh, any comments you might have uh, on what he has presented. So anybody is welcome. Professor Bal Mohan Das Ji, why don't you begin? Yeah, it was uh, nice to hear uh, Raghu Kumar. He always does it an excellent work. And he has authored the book. He has studied, uh, I think, Lohia Gandhi. Uh, I think I was teaching uh, business and government to my MBA students for quite some time at Andhra University. And I wrote a book on Indian industrial economy, the textbook for uh, uh, many of the economics, commerce, management students. The very first chapter was uh, economic systems. So I, I know little about that. I have not read as Rahu Kumar uh, oh. read. <laughs> but then uh, I was worried about the uh, types of socialism, types of economic systems that have been there uh, practiced so far, uh, either in this country or elsewhere in the world, because economic system is uh, generally understood as the economic decision, what to produce, how much to produce, when to produce, by whom to produce, for whom to produce, how it should be after production, how it should be distributed. And lots of problems have been there. I think uh, Marxism, and the various types of socialism, I find utopian, communism, Marxism, in Marxism, Leninism, Stalinism, and democratic socialism, dom social democracy, eco-socialism, liberal socialism, uh, I think Maoism, Dengueism, Trotskyism, uh, <laughs> Atonism, Anarchism, I don't know. Now, alternate socialism. I wish that alternate socialism as advocated by Ram Manohar Lehia and then endorsed by Dr. Raghu Kumar picks up uh, uh, at least in our country uh, so that we can become model for others. I think that is where I will stop. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Ahmed Saab, I think somebody in the chat box. Anybody else? Yes, somebody directly text on me. Uh, yeah, he's asking that please explain uh, uh, the situation of globalization with Loya's thought and oblique new liberalism. What would be the thought on new liberalism? Yes. Yeah. How how this globalization would have been viewed by Lohia? Yes, yes. How he would have offered a critique of it, or what kind of advantages he would have seen? This uh, because Lohia is uh, not a uh, uh, just a critic of the society. He is also, he always comes with uh, the possibilities within. So I think uh, uh, Lohia would have thought of organizing the world order, at least in the order of globalization, uh, as, as, as a block of Asian, African, and Latin American societies. He would have, he would have come with an alternative of organizing or coordinating between the uh, uh, Asian, African, and Latin American countries as the first step towards uh, uh, taking up the challenge of uh, globalization. I think uh, that would have uh, been the idea of uh, uh, Lohia, and it would have also worked. Instead of each country facing the challenges of globalization on its own and throwing the burden of challenge, uh, challenging that to the workers of the individual nations. 
uh, there would have he would have uh, he would have thought of alternatives of organizing even the trade union movements uh, at a higher level by incorporating these three areas as a first step towards uh, taking up the challenge this is my understanding after reading logia for a long time okay if there are no questions then i have one for uh, advocate raghu kumar ji so raghu kumar ji uh, uh, emerging from lohia's politics and his uh, politics uh, and and his uh, you know philosophy uh, we saw the emergence of uh, the backward class politics the number of uh, backward class uh, polit obc politicians you know uh the the credit uh, for their emergence can directly go to lohia uh and for a while we thought that you know the emergence of obc and dalit communities and politicians in their own right you know who became chief ministers and important leaders of the country uh we thought that uh, you know the uh the the these communities uh, a, a certain uh, consciousness was being created and and they were getting politically empowered and we were moving towards the ideal of uh, you know an equal society uh but then there was the emergence of the hindutva politics and it seems to have completely taken over and in fact co-opted the castes which uh, which were emerging you know in their own right and asserting themselves and and you know uh, fighting for uh, you know equality uh, so so what really happened i mean how did if the caste identities were so strong you know uh, one of the indology professors uh, of uh, bhu Uh, professor raj bali pande has defined uh, you know hinduism as a collection of non muslim castes living beyond indus i mean he so i mean all of us know that uh, the the caste identity among the hindus is stronger than the religious identity so how was this uh, this uh, uh, you know politics of empowerment of uh, dalit and obc castes overtaken by this religious fundamentalist politics and 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 they all of them have been co-opted now you know i mean mayawati is today silent in front of bjp so how has this happened uh, i uh, though uh, i cannot uh, say uh, pande ji uh, i just uh, uh, try to Uh, place before you my understanding and i am my understanding of lohia and looking at this problem through lohian uh, yeah basically uh, lohia wanted to explain the phenomena of caste on two fronts one is the political economy angle of uh, the development of caste and the other is a description something called as Uh, or a symbolic representation of valmiki and vasistha tradition which one of one of his uh, uh, basic uh, ideas but uh, this uh, symbolic representation of uh, vasistha and uh, val valmiki tradition has gone much deeper into the social consciousness than the political economy explanation of class caste oscillations this is one uh, what is called as in the interpolating down uh, the idea of uh, uh, lohia about the caste analysis the two elements which is uh, how the class caste oscillations occur how uh, in this particular uh, uh, then uh, how this nature of caste is represented as a symbol symbols have gone deeper uh, and then uh, the political economy has not taken roots probably uh, post lohia i think we are all responsible for uh, not taking this uh, this the primary uh, analysis of uh, lohia deeper into the politics then the second thing is 
uh, even the Marxist tradition, which started understanding the caste in terms of political economy, that is uneven development theory, which most of the Marxists have propagated. They have also given up that idea. They have also uh, virtually now they are not talking about that uh, uneven development theory. But the textual criticism, see, the problem is Ambedkar also was uh, a political economist. Basically, Ambedkar is also an economist. He also tried to, why, that's what uh, the problem. The, Ambedkar also wanted to criticize the system of caste development and all, all, offer alternatives in terms of development, only, economic development. Only. But again, he has used certain images called as uh, the textual uh, uh, representation of the caste. Uh, then these textual uh, uh, narratives have gone deeper, much deeper than the other political economy aspects of uh, Ambedkar. So coupled with that, the religion is comfortable now. The religion has comfortably claimed these two ideas because uh, it's a very they have now they they located the problem in a very smaller domain instead of looking at it as a political economy issue. If you take it as a political economy issue, you have to struggle for uh, uh, what's called equality among classes, equality among the caste, and it takes a lot of sacrifice. But the symbolic representation has taken over the uh, world, uh, vision of the people. And most problem is uh, we, both Marxists and also the uh, Logian socialists, uh, uh, try to present the caste problem in terms of a political economy development. This is my understanding of uh, and how things religion has taken over this particular, because it is only textual based understanding now. And the critic is also offered on the text base. And if the text can be ignored. And the other area is Logia once remarked, very, very, which was a wonderful remark. He said that if caste and the profession are associated, we can at one point of time resolve the uh, uh, what's called as uh, the caste problem. But if caste persists, even after the person is dissociated with the profession and continues to talk about the caste, but the alternative also has to be seen that the other side, especially Ambed Courage, they, their grievances, even after I have come out of the profession, the caste discrimination continues in the society. So this has to be this has to be resolved by the Lohians in a in a in a higher order, where we have to take the the elements of political economy in explaining these things and reduce the significance because the textual analysis is not uh, uh, so seriously taken by its social sociologists anywhere in the world. So this is my understanding of the issue, and this is how it has to go. Thank you, thank you. So I have uh, one question. question. If, if nobody has yes. a question, then we can just ask uh, Hampan Thomas ji to give his presentation. Uh, one, one question I have. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Um, some time ago, I don't want to name a person who is president of some party uh, who says that uh, state government are not the end all for our party. Our party exists despite not winning elections in so many places. I think when we think about Ram Manohar Lohia and his orientation towards party system, in what manner he was different from cadre-based communist party building, or for that matter, in what way he was different from Nehru's mass-based uh, party, uh, party system. Because uh, that is the very severe problem. Even today's context, we feel the same problem. Even socialists, they don't understand what is their role in society for that matter. They want to be uh, a ruler, or you just be the uh, empowerer of uh, oppositions. So, and that is a very severe problem because we don't see any 
differences in terms of education, uh, in terms of uh, economic policies of both Congress and BJP. So we, if you think about alternative socialist vision, then what is your role? You are not uh, strengthening your uh, parties for that matter. You, you do not believe at least, I think there is a kind of alienation towards, um, you know, electoral um, gain. So in, in this sort of legitimacy crisis, what was a kind of thought of Ram Manohar Lohia? Or whether we are misreading Ram Manohar Lohia or we are misinterpreting Ram Manohar Lohia. So, over to you. I, I think, uh, I think in my little understanding of the issue, uh, the, the, broader, the, broad, the broad understanding of Lohia is missing uh, among the Lohians. This is, I don't uh, make it as a complaint because uh, this is the problem with the Marxism also. This is the problem with Gandhians also. This is everywhere. In every philosophy, there is a chasm. There, there's a gap between the main philosopher and the followers. That's one thing. The, the second uh, uh, thing is, uh, what is exactly uh, socialism can offer, alternative socialism can offer? In the in the in the present uh, situation, definitely there is because uh, one thing is historical experience is is showing that either in terms of atomicity or in terms of uh, the uh, 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 revolutionary change, things are not going to happen in the way uh, the mainstream uh, Marxism thought of, and alternatives are necessary. But what kind of, how alternatives can be created is the question. How to organize the Indian society against the capitalists in a broad-based manner, taking into consideration not only class, class, caste, gender, and various aspects. Apart from that, how to mix it or uh, what is called as link it with the uh, with the understanding of international understanding of capitalism, because uh, at, at one point Lohia said that as a nation, Asiatic nations are working class. Not the question of uh, as a nation, America America becomes uh, a capitalist nation. So we have to think in terms of organizing this as a conglomeration of uh, the Asiatic, African, Latin American society. That would have been such a kind of work. Work would have given a broader spectrum for socialism and party-based uh, politics. In fact, Lohia has shown a wonderful uh, path in that area also because uh, if you take uh, Hindu Mazdur Sabha, HMS, as one example, it is uh, even today is functioning as uh, the third or fourth biggest trade union without any having any kind of centralized uh, uh, social uh, the, uh, centralized single philosophy and that model could have been extended in politics also and in fact uh, most of the socialist parties have adopted that area because uh, they have not uh, put any restriction on the member either to be a believer or a non believer so these are all, there are certain certain areas which uh, could have taken further by enlarging the scope, enlarging the scope of uh, uh, what's called as a social practice, this is my uh, uh, what's called as contribution to the discussion. It, it requires a lot of uh, further furtherance of the ideas also through the process of dialogue. Uh, yes, so thank you. Uh, now I request uh, Thumpan Thomas uh, to have. Uh, a chair remark. Yes, Thampan Thomas. Sir. I think he is not connected. Uh, oh, he's, he's there. He is there. Okay. Yes, he is there, but his mic is not connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are right. I I can't see his mic too. Thampan Thomas ji, can you hear us? I 
see the screen moving, but I I don't see. Yes, yes. Hampan Thomas ji, are you there? Ah, uh, he is not connected with mic, sir. It's only with the audio, oh. video. Sandeep ji. Ah. Uh, आप ही दे दीजिए फिर. तो मैं ही कर दूँगा इसे चलिए. ठीक है. तो thank you to Advocate Raghu Kumar ji. Uh, we uh, are really privileged, you know. There are very. When I saw this book for the first time. Presented to me by Ravela Somaya ji. Uh, I was thinking, you know, uh, I don't know anybody in North India who will be thinking of writing a book on Lohia. And here is uh, this man, you know, he has published a book on Lohia here. So uh, that shows his deep commitment. Uh, just like Mr. Ravela Somaya ji, he is another person in Hyderabad, you know, and. Uh, from them we come to know that you know uh, dr lohia has spent a lot of time here and you can clearly see that he has left a mark uh, so with the kind of understanding that advocate uh, ravi kumar ji has of uh, lohia's philosophy uh, i think we need to take uh, more advantage of him and organize more sessions uh, with people because um, you know the new generation hardly knows anything about um and uh, he is just uh, being co-opted as a symbol by the samajwadi party uh, which uh, is uh, not even following his philosophy so uh, you know some of the things uh, that lohia has said are so important from the point of view of uh, uh you know political ideology political ideology today has almost uh, vanished i mean uh, you you can be in politics and you can be in any party uh, <laughs> so commitment to ideology is has taken a back seat and and in in these times it is so important that you know we we bring back the focus on ideology and and talk about the things that lohia was talking about so that the problems of this country the basic problems of this country can be addressed uh and uh, unfortunately the nature of today's politics is to avoid addressing the real problems so it is only through you know uh, a philosophy like lohia's that we can uh, refocus on the problems of this country and try to bring back the politics of this country which has been derailed uh, you know uh, put back on the track and and give it some kind of direction so uh, lohia's thought and people like uh, advocate raghu kumar are very important uh, you know for this purpose and we will be uh, troubling him time and again we are already we have already planned one one physical session with uh, dr raghu kumar i have not yet mentioned it to him because we planned this after we met him uh, past sunday so on 12th of march uh, in la makan in banzara hills in hyderabad if it will be convenient for him we are planning a four hour ideological session with him and some other people you know who who can uh, talk about uh, socialism and and other things which are important for politics so uh, we need to uh, you know seek his guidance and learn from him understand the politics and then decide what our role uh, should be so uh, thank you so much advocate raghu kumar ji and uh, we hope to hear more from you in thank the you, coming days thank you thank you sandeep pandey ji thank you randeep dotto and uh, let me tell you that uh, it's you see your greatness that you are accepting uh, Uh, uh me has uh, in a position of contributing something i no, think no, no, no. Uh, with all humility i say